Is inflation slowing down or are we heading towards a recession? We're going to go over some news articles today just about that topic. Hello everyone and welcome to the Real Estate Daily with the House Heroes. My name is Troy and we go over the latest news in housing, real estate and the mortgage industry. And today I have a lot of articles out there for you about what to expect in the future and what people are seeing. So let's get to the very first article. CNBC came out this morning and actually late last night and said CEO outlook dims sharply with more than half expected a recession ahead survey shows. So we keep seeing this over and over. We started hearing this in March. We saw that the GDP had gone down in the very first quarter, which it kind of stunned a lot of people, but the Fed didn't really react. They just had this mission and they just continue to have the mission of increasing rates over and over, month over month, and they've, they've reinforced that and they've doubled down on that. In the last few weeks, they keep coming out and having this conversation. But more and more corporate America is saying, well, let's, let's hit the brakes here. We're seeing things a lot differently than the Fed. If they go too far and they raise rates too hard, they're going to see a recession. We've seen this in the numbers. Real, the retail numbers that came out for the first quarter, especially with Walmart and with Target, they've been horrible. They've, they've gone under estimates, under estimates and it's just been really bad. Target yesterday took over a 50% hit on their stock. It's been really bad. So let's kind of get into the next article here from CNBC. And this happened just a couple hours ago. The Fed has no problem with stock market going down and they don't. And I've said this many, many times. The reasoning why there's inflation and the, the, the Fed continues to raise rates is to knock your wealth down. So if you actually converted you know, your stocks, bonds, or crypto into cash, into hardback dollars, you're doing really good, even though inflation is eating it away because the stock market and the NASDAQ are getting punished and crypto are just getting punished and they're losing and losing and losing. And I know that some people out there, are, you know, 401ks, there's not a whole lot you can do. Just stick it out at this moment. And that's what the, the strategy a lot of people are doing. It's not financial advice but stick it out. But the Fed doesn't care about your wealth. They only care about taming inflation. And one of the, one of the you know, collateral damages of taming inflation is to pound you know, these markets. Next article here is again from CNBC. It says existing home sales fell in April to the lowest level since the start of the pandemic. We've seen this. People don't know where to move. And we've said this many, many times. You know, they because they don't know where to move, they don't want to put their home for sale. They don't want to put their home for sale with a very tight inventory. And in the article here, they talk about that. They talk about inventory is just completely down. So you do you expect sales to go down? So please, when you read these articles, if you look at the macro, you will know that it's not because of interest rates that existing homes fell in April. It's because of inventory. Please understand that. If you look, and especially this article, they mention it. If you look over year to year, April 21 to April 22, the average home price went up 15% in the United States, up 15%. So we're not seeing a nosedive here. We're actually seeing that there's just not enough homes on the market to satisfy buyers. And we keep seeing that because of that, home sales are going down. Next article here, and this is something I've, I've been preaching now for a while. This is no relief in sight. Rental prices continue to soar in April. And I'm looking at the April numbers, the annual numbers from April 2021 20, to April 22. Rents have gone up 16.7%. So on this particular Realtor.com article, and they've been tracking rental rates, this is the highest of all time. ATM all time high, ATH, excuse me, all time high. Rents just keep going up. And here in, you know, in LA County, you know, we've had this rent control, you know, a rent lockdown now for the past two, two and a half years where we can't even raise anyone's rents. Imagine when we could start raising rents. Well, rent control came in and said we can raise it in September of this year 5%. So imagine you've gone two and a half years, you haven't raised rents yet. You know, all, you know, inflation has just been eating away at everything, right? So you're, so it's just been very bad. 
you know, for certain cities across the United States where they've really locked up and they're really renter, you know, pro renter, you know, as a landlord and, you know, they're, they're the ones that are hurting as well as the renters. So we have to kind of take a look and, and find that happy medium. But, you know, I, I, I am in for, you know, rent control, but it's got to be within within reason. It can't just be, I'm, you know, let's just lock everyone down and then get 5%. You know, it doesn't make any sense. It's just, again, you know, you know, the city of Los Angeles and some of these cities across the United States, they're just wanting to control the narrative. And that's always will be bad. When you have the government controlling your narrative and controlling your life, then you know that you have less control. Make sure you vote those people out. Make sure you show up at the polls because those people are not there for you. They're there to get votes. They're there for money. They're not there to help the people of their cities. And the last article here is, again, the average rates across the United States. We're seeing that the conventional is the only one that's gone up conforming. It went slightly up uh, three basis points, but we're seeing the 15 year conforming go and we see a huge drop in the 30 year jumbo. It almost went down 10 basis points and FHA dropped about six basis points. Again, I think we're going to be trading in the range in this range. I think that we're going to see a little bit more of a dip in rates again today as are being reported at the end of the day tomorrow. It's going to be good. You know, we're kind of, we're kind of steady, steadying the ship. And as I've been saying day after day, I think that you know, we already have the 50 basis points for June already baked into these rates. It's actually what's going to determine the next jump in rates or to keep at the same level or to lower rates is what the Fed and what Powell Chairman, you know, Chairman Powell is going to say after the Fed meeting in June. What is he going to say at that news conference that's going to make everyone either bullish or bearish on, on rates going forward throughout the summer? Well, guys, if you like the content, hit that like button. I definitely appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button. We do this every day, Monday through Friday, give you a five or 10 minute outlook and news articles of the real estate market, as well as hit that notification button. When we drop these videos, you'll be the first to, to jump on, see it and be informed and educated. Otherwise, guys, we will see you tomorrow on Friday.